Okay, so in this example we have a strapped drum of mass m and radius of gyration about its center point O of k0, which is attached to a smooth shaft passing through its center. We're told a cable that was wrapped around the outer radius of the drum is attached to block A, and a second cable wrapped around the inner radius of the drum is attached to block B. We're asked to assume that the cables do not slip on the drum, and to assume furthermore that the system is released from rest. Given this information, we're asked to determine the speed of block B after it's dropped a distance of 1.5 meters. Okay, so to solve this problem, we're going to go ahead and start by drawing a free-by diagram for the system. We know this is a work energy problem because we're looking for speeds, in this case the speed of block B, after a change in distance, and that's a key indicator to us we want to use work energy. So we're going to draw a little free-by diagram up here, and if I do that, then again, we're going to do this for the system. We want to make our system as big as possible when we're using the work energy equation. We're going to have forces on this of MA times G, we have forces of MB times G acting down. We'll have the weight of the big pulley, which will be M times G. We'll have reactions at the center here, which will be OX and OY. And I think that should be just about it. So now that I have that, we can look at this and we can say, does anything here contribute non-conservative work? Well, we know that the weights will be accounted for in the potential energy, and so I don't need to worry about that. And we furthermore know that the points OX and OY, uh, because O does not, or I should say the forces OX and OY, aren't going to contribute work because point O doesn't move. And so as a net result here, we can simply say that T1 plus V1 plus U1 to 2 non-conservative is going to equal T2 plus V2. And furthermore, based on the fact that no forces do non-conservative work, we can say that U1 to 2 non-conservative goes to zero. Now, in addition to this, I'm going to want to be able to account for everything else. We're told the system is released from rest, which means that the initial kinetic energy is zero. In terms of potential energy, we need to set a datum. And in this regard, because the center of mass of the pulley is not moving, I don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to set individual datums for block B and block A. So I'm going to choose to choose the initial position of block B as being the datum and the initial position of block A as being the datum as well. So that's going to give me, in this case, zero potential energy at state 1 as well. So now what I have here is 0 is equal to T2 plus V2, and I simply need to identify these two terms. So in terms of T2 at the second state, we're going to have a the pulley being in pure translation, so it's going to have a kinetic energy of 1 half I about O times omega 2 squared. Then I'll have block A in translation, so I'll have 1 half times MA times VA squared. And I'll have block B in translation, so I'll have 1 half times MB times VB squared. I can also write down V2. So in this case, we're going to note that V2 is going to move down a distance of what I'll call D. So I'm going to have minus MB times G times distance D. And I'm going to add to that, if B moves down, A is going to have to move up, so I'll have MA times G times what I'll call delta sub A. Now if I equate these two things, or more accurately just substitute them back into the work energy expression, what we'll realize is that we currently have one equation with one, two, three, four unknowns. And so we need to find a relationship, in this case via kinematics, that helps us solve for those unknowns. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to note that point O, because the center of rotation is an instant center, and if I have that, I can say that VB is equal to R times omega 2, or if you would, omega 2 is equal to VB divided by R. That'll be one equation that we can use to eliminate it one unknown. I can use somewhat similar logic and say then that the speed of block A has to equal big R times omega 2, which is going to equal, in this case, big R times quantity VB divided by R. So they'll give me another unknown which I can use and substitute in the equation. If I use this relationship that VA is equal to R over R times VB, I can also use this relationship to get delta A. So in this case, I'm going to get delta A is going to equal R over little r times the distance traveled, which would be delta B, which is going to be, in this case, R over R times the distance D. If we plug each of these three kinematic results in conjunction with the definitions for T2 and V2 back into the work energy equation, what you get is a single equation with a single unknown, which you can use to solve for the speed VB. Since that's a relatively straightforward exercise in linear algebra, I'll leave it for up to you to do, and I know you got it. So I'll simply wish you the best of luck. Take care, everyone.